Hello, Northwest Indiana. Uh, I'm Dr. Mike McGee. Uh, I'm sitting here with some amazing students from Westside High School. Uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then I'll tell you more about me. But I think most of you out there know me at Northwest Indiana. I'm Dr. McGee from the Emergency Department at Methodist Hospital in Gary and Maryville. I'm also the founder of POP on u 5 If you remember, before the pandemic, we were out there doing amazing things with the students, uh, doing our best to advocate for preventing violence, but also trying to encourage students to go to medical school and dental school and college and just higher education and all. Um, we're back. Um, it's been a long two and a half years, um, and so we're trying to do some great things that we'll discuss shortly. Um, but yeah, I am the, uh, the, you know, over the emergency department at Methodist, but also uh, the founder of a urgent care in Chicago. And so we're doing things in Northwest Indiana as well as Chicago. And so I want to pause for a minute and let you guys meet some of my guests here. Uh, why don't you go first, Quincy, ladies first. Okay, my name is Quincy Williams. I am a 11th grader. Um, I'm a three-sport athlete, and I'm very happy to be here and talk to you about POP. Three-sport athlete uh, and a very intelligent young lady and a leader here at Westside. Dante, why don't you take it over? My name is Dante Pope. I'm a sophomore, and I'm a two-sport athlete. Captain of the football team or and the quarterback of the yes. football team? You know, very, very powerful. Uh, and a smart guy as well. So, uh, yeah, so we'll talk more about your, your leadership, the ambassador position you guys have a little bit later. But, yeah, we're here now um, basically because um, this is a special week. Uh, unfortunately, before we started our pop organization, about eight or nine years ago, no one knew about this special moment in time. Um, this is something that happens on an annual basis, and it's called the National Youth Violence Prevention Week. So this is the week to elevate our youth and let them know that we care about them and also try to help them to get over the epidemic of violence that's out there. Um, as you guys know, the epidemic of violence was already prevalent uh, before COVID, but COVID unleashed something. We had a lot of kids who were shut in. We've been interviewing kids and talking to them about you know, what they went through through COVID. And everyone's saying the same thing. They're basically saying they were shut in, they were bored, they were, they were idle, uh, they had a little bit of anxiety, they couldn't sleep. Some had more situations than others. And most importantly, while at home, they were on social media and had a lot of beef going on. They had a lot of arguments going on on social media and couldn't see each other. And so now when school started back, what happens? Fights everywhere, not just in Gary, not just in Northwest Indiana, but all over the city. Um, I'm a part of 100 Black Men of America. Uh, this is an organization where black men uh, mentor youth from ages, uh, from junior high school to adulthood. And I'm the national chair for violence prevention. And I can tell you uh, to every chapter, there's been fights all over in schools all over the country. And what does fights lead to? There are altercations that often can lead to gun violence. Um, and so we're trying our best to, to figure out how the kids are thinking and trying our best to try to prevent it and also trying our best to elevate our youth and to show them that we care and to hopefully promote more unity and tolerance towards them. Uh, and so um, we have looked at the stats uh, and I know the stats because uh, as a, having a background in epidemiology and biostats, I look at these numbers. And so the New England Journal of Medicine just recently said just three days ago that now homicide and gun violence is the number one killer of all youth ages 1 to 19. In the past, it would be motor vehicle accidents, cancer, or overdoses. Now, violence has passed all those other ideologies for why kids are dying. And to me, that's a travesty. And as you already know, with all the health disparities, it's not just um, everyone. Uh, what we see now that most black men, young black men, have a higher disparity in terms of gun violence. In fact, the number one killer for young black men out here is gun violence between ages 10 and 24. And the number two killer for Hispanic men is gun violence for age two, 10 to 24. So to me, that's, that's a, a national emergency that all people, all of us who care about our youth need to be out trying our best to prevent it and doing whatever we can to, to make sure that youth um, recognize uh, where we are um, at this day and time and hopefully do things to prevent it. And so um, one other thing that's, that's important in terms of why uh, our youth are, 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 are dying, 
um, the FBI homicide data that looks at data on black America for the past seven years have consistently shown that most of these uh, young black men are being shot by somebody they know, an acquaintance, not a stranger. Um, they're being shot with a handgun because they have easy access to it. And then they're being shot not from gangs. That's number two. It's altercations. It's people that are upset, pissed off, and then they have access to a gun. And so they shoot. And you don't have to be from the hood. You can be from anywhere and be in a mall and get into a fight with a, a group of people. And now they go pull out a gun and start shooting. You can be in an Airbnb, which just happened on Easter weekend in Pittsburgh, where some young people rented an Airbnb. About 200 youth were there. And a fight broke out. And then guns came next. And two young people died. And eight other people got shot. And so these are the things that, that, that make me not sleep at night and should make every adult not sleep at night as well as every youth, because it's pretty much similar to genocide. Uh, and and we, 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 we got to do better, uh, and we can, and we got to express how, what they can do to, do to make it better. And so we're here today to celebrate uh, National Youth Violence Prevention Week, and we're doing the Peace, Unity, and Love Tour. And so we're basically going through schools throughout Northwest Indiana and Chicago and taking motivational speakers, we're going to have a member from the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement to talk to youth about what happens if you get put over by a police. Why should you not pick up a gun that's lying in the alley um, that you don't know where it's been and carry it with you? And, you know, what can you do to do better so that, you know, there's no misconceptions between you and the police and things happen that shouldn't happen? We're also going to be doing a quick demonstration on Stop the Bleed. For those of you who don't know, the Stop the Bleed initiative is an initiative that started in 2015 by uh, Obama uh, and the Department of Homeland Security. And they noticed that violence was ticking up and people were being shot for no apparent reason. Um, people were being involved in you know, mass uh, shootings that occurred in movie theaters and malls and you know, Walmart. Uh, and so now anybody's at risk. It can be your child that can get shot. It can be your mother, your sister, could be minding their own business and now an errant bullet can come towards them. And so we're basically trying to teach people, hey, if you get shot in the arm, that's not insignificant. You got major arteries and vessels that can get shot in peers that can lead to a lot of bleeding. And so we want you to hold pressure and prevent the blood from going on the floor because you only have a certain amount of blood in your body before when you get to the emergency room where I work, I can't do anything about you. Because you lost so much blood on the floor that now you're in total shock, your blood pressure is extremely low, and I, even giving you a blood transfusion may not save your life. And so we're trying to encourage everybody uh, to learn how to stop the bleed. So we're going to be doing that with some students. Today we were at the juvenile detention center yesterday teaching the kids there how to stop the bleed and talking about violence. Today we're going to be at the Gary Police Department at uh, 5 o'clock uh, teaching another group of students, especially some students from Westside as well who are leaders. Uh, we're going to be going to multiple schools um, tomorrow and Thursday and Friday. Um, and we're excited about what we're doing. And most of all, we have the next new addition coming from L.A. This is the RB group called Fortrell. And they're a group of young men who are brothers who are in high school who are blowing up on social media. And so Big Mike is their manager and he's done some stuff with us in the past. And he contacted my cousin, Paul Bradley, the ex-chief uh, of fire, and said, hey, we're coming in town. Uh, what can we do to get to some schools? And so I essentially set up a tour called the Peace, Unity, and Love Tour. And we go on to multiple different places. And I'll give you a quick rundown, and then we're going to deviate to our students. So we were just at the Juvenile Detention Center yesterday. Uh, we're going to go to Kenwood High School um, at 1 o'clock. Uh, we're going to come back and go and do the alternate program uh, at the Gary Police Department. Tomorrow, we're going to be at Joplin Elementary and Junior High School in Inglewood. We're going to be at North Lawndale um, in, on the west side of Chicago. Um, and then we're going to be at Progressive um, Church, with, which is New Beginnings, uh, right there in um, um, Inglewood, too. And then on Thursday, we're going to be at Hammond uh, Morton in the morning. We're going to be at Scott Junior High School in the afternoon. And then at East Chicago Central, we have their whole gym with over 2,000 kids we're going to be. And then on Friday morning, we're going to be at Maryville High School. 
And then on uh, Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock, we'll be right here at Westside with kids from all over Gary coming uh, for a concert-like event that's going to be magnificent. And so the leaders here, um, I met them uh, two weeks ago, actually three, three weeks ago, maybe three and a half weeks ago. And they are a special group of leaders here at Westside, and I want them to talk about what you guys do um, and what your organization is, is about and what you're doing here. Go ahead, Quincy, Dante. Um, well, <clears throat> I'm the quarterback of the football team. We, um, our main concern is trying to keep like the kids out of the streets. So we keep as many people as we can and try not to kick them off the teams and keep them out of trouble inside of school and give them something to do outside of, outside of school. And um, I'm a part of the track team also. And that's important, right? Because right now, all the data shows that kids that are idle, who don't have anything to do, get into trouble. And so I love the fact that you guys are doing stuff not only in school, but out of school to prevent them from getting in trouble. Um, because that's a major problem, um, you know, being idle and lack of religiosity. So not having religion in their life has been two main factors for why kids get into trouble and, and, and have incidents that happen. Quincy? Yeah, um, I'm a three-sport athlete as well. I'm part of the track team, basketball team, and the volleyball team. And just like Dante said, we try to make sure we are a family as well as teammates. So we try to make sure that we're there for each other. Everybody has everything that they need, no matter what it is, no matter it's food or ride home. We always try to make sure we're there for one another. Um, I'm also a part of the Gary Youth Council with the um, City of Gary Common Council. Um, I'm a part of the Elite Eight, and we work together to try to find, um, you know, new things to do in the community, and we focus on the youth. So, like, we try to make new laws and, um, you know, new things, new programs. Uh, we're trying to fix up some parks just so, like, the youth will have a safe place to be and feel like they have good leaders to help them out. Wow. She said all the buzzwords, right? Safe place, which they all need, because now they can be at any basketball court and things can happen. She talked about the social determinants of health. You know, lack of food, lack of transportation, all those things affect you adversely. She also talked about caring about each other. And so if anybody knows about social emotional learning, that's the new word that all the schools are getting involved to in terms of having students to look at and feel the responsibility of their actions, but also having empathy towards other. And that's what she essentially said. They care about each other. And there are some kids who may not have a family member who may be homeless. And we're seeing that a lot. And so having that family-like atmosphere is, is very detrimental to, um, to our youth. And so I'm really glad that you guys are doing those things. Um, one of the things that we're introducing uh, to um, all the youth, the schools that we go to, we've looked at best practices for preventing violence. And that best practice is basically um, students taking ownership. And so we've been basically um, encouraging students uh, to form an organization or, or, or be an ambassador for SAVE. SAVE means Students Against Violence Everywhere. And basically it's online, it's free, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, and youth can basically go on and figure out, well, what can we do to prevent violence in our school? Um, it teaches them how to, to set up their own seminars where they go and get their own speaker. And now that speaker come and address whatever problems inherent at their school. If it's racial you know, inequality, uh, if it's a, an outbreak of sexually transmitted diseases, if, if it's violence that's going on, if it's domestic abuse, they can bring up any speaker they want and have their own program that they can facilitate. Because the reality is, Dr. McGee and other people out there who's trying to prevent violence, I can't be at your school every day. You know, I, I have a family, I have a life. So we try to want to encourage the youth to take up the mantle and do what they need to do because the reality is it's going to come from within. And adults can, can make them prevent the violence that they're seeing or doing. And so we are. And so not only are we targeting the kids who are doing outstanding, we're targeting the kids who, I don't want to call them bad, I'm going to call them the influencers. The kids that we all know who's bullying, who's starting the fights, who have issues that everybody knows about, we want them to be insane. Because for me, the way you target a situation, you target the ones who are doing the problem you know, who are, who are causing a little bit of the problem and who's influencing others. If you get them to change, then now everybody's going to follow suit. They're going to see, well, man, Johnny don't want to beat me up no more. He's actually saying, hey, the next time we see a fight, I'm going to break it up. And that's the problem now, right? Our kids, they have a fight. They videotape it. And so it propagates. And then kids at home who are not even, may not be in school, they may be expelled, are seeing it. 
And now they all want to get into action. And so next thing you know, everybody want to start a fight so they can be on social media and go viral. And that's what you see all across the country. All these schools, the kids are videotaping, in which case, if it was me, you wouldn't have a phone in school. It'll be in your locker until school is over. Um, but I think we got to get a hold of that because it's all being propagated uh, and it's causing other kids to want to wanna be involved with it. And so how do you how do you balance that out? You do positive things. You, 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 you encourage those kids to not, you know, let that fight even take place. If you see some kids beefing off and you know that's your boy, grab your boy and say, yo, let's let's go, man. Let's not do this. You know, if it's a girl about to fight and, you know, and, and, and everybody is there. Instead of sitting there and watching it and, and egging it on, everybody just get between and push them away and say, look, we're not doing this today. Because at the end of the day, it affects your education. Uh, it affects your outlook. Um, and it's not a good, positive thing to have happen. And we got to change that. And it starts from within. Because guess what? Those simple fights escalate when you got mothers, brothers, sisters getting into it. Then now you got somebody at home with a gun who's pissed off that, that, that Kelly got, got her hair pulled out. And now things escalate and, and they just, you know, blow out of proportion. So we want kids to, to really recognize what we're trying to do. Um, two things that we're doing, and I'm going to end, uh, is Pop, I'm sorry, Save talks about uh, incentive-based challenges. And so there are two challenges that when I came in three and a half weeks ago, I introduced this. And I said, guys, we're going to have a challenge between 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders over the next three weeks to see who can have the greatest reduction in fights between the classes. So if 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders, whoever went from having, you know, 50 fights a month down to 25, whoever had the greatest reduction is going to win a pool party. I'm sorry, a pizza party, not a pool party, a pizza party. Um, you get to wear some T-shirts that we're going to make for you. You get to dress down and pop. It's going to give you $1,000 for a community event where well, you're going to get credit for and we're going to have the media to be there to see that you're doing these amazing things. And now we're going to announce this in front of a lot of people on April 29th, which is Friday. And so that's what happened. So I want you guys to talk a little bit about this challenge and what you've seen since I brought that to you guys. Um, ever since you came and talked to us, the total of physical accidents from April 7th to April 22nd at Westside has went down. 68%, and that's... 68%? 68% through grades 9th through 12th is went down 68% out of all of us. So I feel like that's good because we went from having fights every day, every hour, to knocking it down to almost half. So I wow. think that's good. Well, 68% is actually a little bit more than half, and that's, a, that's excellent. You know, so the, the pretense behind that is, you know, we want to trick them into doing better. And not only trick them, but let them know, guys, look at it from this side. Y'all went from, you know, even being scared to walk down the hall because you don't know if you're going to get hit by a mistake or being pulled into something to now feeling that you're in a safer school and that there's more camaraderie between the two, you know, between all of you. And that's where we need to go. We need to have more unity. We need to have more love for each other. And that's what's been missing all across the country. Um, and it's blowing up. And so we need to get back to those days where we all cared about each other um, and these things will not escalate. So that's what we're trying to do. The second challenge that we're doing, um, and this, with, this is a national challenge we're doing with 100 black men. And again, I'm the chair of that committee. And so we're doing a Juneteenth Unity Day. And it's a TikTok challenge where we want any kid all over the country can be in it. And basically, you just have to submit a 30 to 60 second video on unity or violence prevention. And you can sing, dance, do martial arts, do poetry, um, gospel, whatever you want. And you have to have a minimum of 100 shares, which, which gets you into the, the actual um, contest. And then now, whoever has the top three shares is going to win $2,500 for first prize, $1,000 for second prize, and first, third prize will be $500. And we got two categories, age 10 to 17, and then age 18 to 24. And that age is very significant because that's the risk, that's the age that's highest at risk for gun violence, age 10 to 24. And so we're trying to get as many people as we can to go ahead on and, and, and be involved with this. And we'll be giving you guys more detail. All you have to do is go to 100blackmen.org, our website. There's a landing page. And by the way, 
in order for you to actually do this as well, it's not just having 100 shares. You got to go on our website, watch this video, which is 20 minutes called Black and Brown Hands Across America until help arrives. And on that video, we talk to you a little bit about violence, the stats I just mentioned. But most importantly, we teach you and your parents how to do Stop the Bleed and CPR using a pillow. So it tells you what you need in order to do it. And then it's, it walks you through it. It's an exciting video and everyone in your whole family can learn. And then after that, you have to do a quick 30 second, 60 second survey. And then we also offer the website, pop, uh, I'm sorry, save, nationalsave.org for you to go and learn how to become a, an ambassador for preventing violence at your school. And so I encourage you guys, uh, we'll have the flyer up. Uh, we'll have flyers passing out on um, the days that we're uh, doing our tours. And then on that same day, and this is the last caveat, we're going to have a crisis intervention card. It's going to be sort of like this, but a little smaller. It's going to be laminated. We, we just paid to have that done. And on it, we're going to have um, all the, the, ner the numbers you need if you have a crisis, mental health, if you have domestic violence, if you're LGBT, if you um, are homeless, if you're teen pregnancy. So we're going to have all those numbers, not only for Northwest Indiana numbers, but also for Chicago. Uh, my, my new team, which is uh, Kelsey Harvey and uh, Maurice Jenkins, uh, they are our pop and save ambassadors. They actually went on and did the research. The numbers are up to date. Uh, they have our websites listed for these particular um, uh, resources. And we feel that kids are going to get a lot out of it. Parents are going to love it. And the teachers are definitely going to love it. And so I think um, I'm going to stop now. Uh, any final comments you guys want to make? <laughs> um, our total incidents throughout the whole school have went down 29%. It started off with 115 incidents and now, 100, and now 82 incidents. Let me, let me clap on that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love to hear that. And then a 68% reduction in fights in over three weeks. We should be able to do that at all these schools. And we need as many sponsors out there to help because think about it. We're offering a thousand dollars. What if we had some people to give us some sponsorship and now we can offer them two thousand dollars? And so we want to try to have another challenge from Friday until the end of the school year to see who else can win. And so we're going to try to announce that uh, on Friday that we're going to do this again. I'm not sure how much money it'll be, but that's what we hope to achieve to see if we can end this whole year on a very good positive note. And then next year, we have all kinds of things planned because one of the things that we also have uh, going for us is we have uh, a, a federal grant where we're going to be coming into the schools, teaching Bofkin's life skills, which is basically a program that's used to uh, teach kids about self-management, about conflict resolution, about social emotional learning, about having uh, how to prevent drug use and alcohol use. And then also we're going to be working with the police department and having a council for youth and for the police to come together to find out what makes you go or what are the things that we shouldn't be doing. And so we have a whole plethora of things that we have planned. I'm looking forward to working with you guys um, and I want to thank you guys for being here today. And uh, let's get it. All right.